Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to 1936, a year filled with many amazing firsts. In this year, the Baseball Hall of Fame included its first members. NBC aired the first televised variety show, and Boca Raton opened its first and only airport, a WPA, Work Progress Administration project obtained through the efforts of Clarence Henry Geist, former owner of the Boca Raton Resort and Club. In 1941, America entered the Second World War, spurring a rapid expansion of the Army Air Corps. In need of strategically placed Army Air Force bases, the Army Air Corps zeroed in on South Florida, established three bases throughout Palm Beach and Dade counties. Boca's mild climate, coastal location, flat terrain, and available land for expansion made the airport an ideal site for an army base. The Japanese-American farming community, known as the Yamato Colony, once inhabited the land next to the airport. But after much of the community dispersed in the early 1900s, the land was made available to house the Boca Raton Army Airfield. After months of construction, the airfield opened in 1942 and continued to expand throughout the war. At its peak, the base encompassed about 800 buildings on 5,860 acres stretching from Dixie Highway to Military Trail and Yamato Road to Palmetto Park Road. It took over $9 million and 3,500 construction workers to build the base, which served over 16,000 troops a year and employed around 1,200 civilians. Though the airfield operated as a base for air sea patrol and a way station for planes being ferried to Europe, its primary mission was much more unique. The airfield served as the training base where all Army Air Force flight crews learned to use radar, a then brand new technology. Since the airfield was the Army Air Force's only airborne radar training station during World War II, it created an ever-increasing need for flight training and aircraft. By 1945, 100 planes were regularly assigned to the airfield, including medium bombers like the Boeing B-17 and the larger, faster B-29. After the war, American and Allied troops continued to train at the Boca Raton Airfield, but the numbers consistently declined until 1947, when the Army Air Corps decided to transfer operations to Keesler Army Airfield in Mississippi. Unfortunately, two devastating hurricanes hit Boca Raton before the move could be made, leaving the base uninhabitable and eventually condemned. On December 29, 1948, the tide turned for the Boca Raton Airport when it was transferred from the United States of America to the town of Boca Raton, with a provision that it be used for the benefit of the public. In the 1950s, the control of the land was transferred to the state of Florida, and 1,000 acres was released for educational use, eventually becoming Florida Atlantic University. For over three decades, the airport passed through the stewardship of five different government agencies as it evolved to better serve the local flying community. In 1983, the Boca Raton Airport Authority was enacted by the state legislature to control the airport, cultivating its premier general aviation facility and valued community partner that it is today. Under the authority's leadership, the airport opened its first air traffic control tower in the year 2000. In 2015, the airport completed its 9,270 square foot administration building, constructed to meet LEED Silver Certification standards, solidifying it as an achievement in energy efficiency and environmentally sustainable design. In 2018, the airport opened a Customs and Border Protection Facility. This has enabled international flights to fly directly into the Boca Raton Airport. Today, the airport boasts 125 T-hangers, nearly 300 based aircrafts, and two full-service fixed-based operators, serving the corporate, recreational, and flight training needs of the community. While the airport's past is storied and its history is rich, it pales in comparison to the future we're building together. Boca Raton Airport, helping our community soar.